the Bitcoin group, the American original. For over the last 10 seconds, the sharpest Satoshis, the best Bitcoins, the hardest cryptocurrency talk. We'd like to welcome our panelists, Dan Eve, the Crypto Raptor. Crypto Raptor reporting for Judy. And I'm Thomas Hunt from the World Crypto Network. Moving on to issue one. Issue one, Bitcoin protests in El Salvador against cryptocurrency as legal tender. Thousands of protesters have taken to the streets in El Salvador, angry at the introduction of Bitcoin as its legal tender. President Nayib Bukele says the cryptocurrency will help Salvadorians working abroad to send money home, but demonstrators fear it could bring instability and inflation to the impoverished Latin American country. Some protesters even set fire to a brand new Bitcoin machine, while others held signs reading, Bukele, dictator. At the same time, El Salvador's credit rating could take a hit amongst Bitcoin adoption, warns S&P Global. Dan, Eve, what do you think about El Salvador, the protests, and the potential for bad credit for the whole country? You're muted. It kind of seems that uh, it's uh, intermingled with, uh, you know, um, them protesting what they, uh, you know, what they feel is a dictatorship, right? Um, although even though I think it's the article said that there was like an 85.7% approval rating, uh, which is, that's pretty high, right? Considering uh, I, I think most people in the UK certainly hate Boris Johnson. So I think if he had an 85% uh, approval rating, that would be pretty, pretty ninja. Uh, but whether that's part of the dictatorship, right? Whether that's part of the manipulation of, of the people, ooh, nobody knows. Um, but uh, I think also, yeah, they said he was having his second successful term, but but via kind of maybe uh, kind of uh, workarounds to the constitution, as it were. Um, but the thing about them fearing the instability and inflation is that, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't mean any offense to, to, to any dollar lovers, but obviously, you know, um, El Salvador uses the dollar at the moment. They don't have their own, like, you know, native currency. And uh, what does bring inflation, actually, uh, it isn't definitely Bitcoin. It's definitely printing trillions of dollars. Uh, that's one thing. And it's also definitely uh, having an infinite amount of money can bring inflation. Those are kind of those are two things that definitely do bring inflation. So I think it obviously is a bit of a risk. And the S&P, uh, obviously, um, they're the opposite of the S&P, the unique and rich, which kind of sounds Bitcoin-y in a way without kind of going down that uh, have fun, stay in poor route. But the S&P, you know, they've said that it's, uh, it's high risk for, for El Salvador um, due to, and they said one of the things was, you know, they were worried about its adoption due to the low rates of crypto literacy. But if you've used, if you've used Lightning, you, you get given a, a QR code, you scan the QR code, you, re you receive the Bitcoin or you send the Bitcoin and that, that's it, you're done. Or you receive Bitcoin and then you just choose whether you sell it using the government, you know, the Chivo wallet, the auto sell, what feature, whatever it is, um, or you keep it. Now, obviously, there is speculation on whether the Bitcoin goes up or, or down. But in terms of being crypto literate, it's hardly like the old days of Bitcoin where you had to like, you know, download a QT wallet, wait for it to sync. And then it, it, then it was empty, right? You don't get Bitcoin straight away. So then you had to like go to Verwox and then buy Linden dollars with euros. And then with your Linden dollars, then you buy Bitcoin and then you send it to your Bitcoin wallet uh, and all of that. So it's definitely, you know, I think the, the levels of crypto literacy that you need to get involved now, it's the, the, you know, the standard is a lot lower and it's being made extremely accessible. Um, now, the, the, what's interesting is the, the pushback. They say it like with an authoritarian, authoritative stamp. You know, there's pushback from two in incredibly respected entities, the World Bank and the IMF, inc incredibly uh, respected. <clears throat> and the, uh, the World Bank said, oh, you know what is dire? Um, you know, the, 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 the consequences of adopting Bitcoin, you know, that could be dire. But you know what really is dire? Printing money, uh, fractional reserve lending, credit culture, uh, and and yeah, going back to a double dire infinite amounts of money uh, in a treasury because that just 
it deflates, it, sorry, it inflates the currency, obviously, and then it makes people's money worth less, right? If imagine a system where you and I just, we create our own currency, but uh, you can just make more money. It's like, it's like if you're to play Monopoly and like the banker just keeps on giving them, so the banker is also a player and they give themselves some more money. And you're like, hey, but hang on a sec, but that you, you've just, you just you've made more money. Like, uh, you know, that's, that's unfair. These are not fair rules of engagement. Um, they obviously did, you know, uh, cover the environmental and transparency shortcomings of Bitcoin, um, not realizing that uh, perhaps that it's a public ledger. So it's kind of definitely transparent, right? So saying that it's got transparency shortcomings is a bit silly because it's way more transparent than all the other banking methods that we currently use. Um, so I think in all, uh, obviously it's a big grand experiment with El Salvador and there is there is risk. But for starters, you know who doesn't care about bad credit ratings? People who have money. And uh, and if this does work out for El Salvador, um, you know, hoarding Bitcoin or being able to hoard Bitcoin, then there'll be people who don't care about a bad credit rate. It'll literally be like going, the S&P like going, oh, they've got a bad rating. And they're like, oh, but I've got thousands of Bitcoins. Piss off. Oh, you know. So, yeah. Go well, I, I just think there's a big difference between a dictatorship and a democracy. So this is pretty clearly a dictatorship. And the whole time that we here on the Bitcoin group have been talking about this issue and talking about El Salvador, we've been talking about how the law is just being put into action. The president, his economic council think it's a good idea. So they're putting it into action. And that's what we see now in the streets. The people haven't been educated about this law. They haven't been given a fair chance to decide whether they like it or not. So in a kind of knee jerk reaction, they're saying no to Bitcoin. But what I really think they're saying no to is this paternal attitude by the government that you should do what we say because and I think the people would prefer a democratic system where they have a government that they can elect that would maybe move more slowly. Uh, when you have a unilateral system with one person in charge, <clears throat> you can make decisions like this, but you also have that problem where no one will respect it. The people will be mad, even if it is a good decision. This could be a good thing for El Salvador that the people hate uh, for a bad reason, and or it could just be the people are tired of dictatorial government and they want some stay in their vote. So as for the World Bank and all of that, I do agree with Dan. I think they're kind of being reactionary as well. They're worried about this experiment succeeding. If Bitcoin took off in El Salvador, it could take off in other places. They wouldn't want that now, would they? So it's a bit interesting to watch, but once again, we don't get to choose who adopts Bitcoin. Anyone can, any government can, any country, and uh, we can't say yes or no. Uh, so this is a test for us as well, a test for the Bitcoin community, an example to see what happens. So moving on to the exit question, Dan, do you think El Salvador will continue with their Bitcoin plan or will some small protests and the burning of a Bitcoin machine lead them to completely change their mind and cancel? Well, going back to that that apparent uh, uh, um, uh, 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 approval rating of eighty five percent, right? That's that's pretty high. That's you know, it's eight eighty five percent. It's eight eight and a half people out of ten, and so one point five people uh, isn't really in, enough. To, I don't know to think to make that much of a, a fuss over something, right? Um, obviously, you can go and protest, but but if if it's largely consensus, right, you know, way more than a 51 percent attack, then maybe it has got a chance to go through and that what we're seeing is more of a reactionary um, uh, reaction, a reactionary reaction of the of the, the the kind of dictatorship moves The you know, mentioned earlier about the, the Constitution kind of being um uh tweaked in order to be able to get a successive term so maybe the bitcoin thing is just a side a side um uh you know a side issue and really the main reason why people are um uh, uh riot right rioting protesting and but i say rioting because they burnt something and and obviously you know that's damage to properties is that right but um yeah the, the end of the day is 85 percent uh, enough to be you know to keep a solid ground and and keep the the protesters uh in the minority um perhaps so 
The project will continue, but it's a bad look for Bitcoiners. It's a bad look for El Salvador. And it makes it hard. It makes us harder to, for us to say things like Bitcoin is voluntarily and anyone can have Bitcoin or not have it when they're forcing you to have it in El Salvador. So, uh, but once again, we can't decide who uses Bitcoin. Moving on to issue two. From one dictator to another dictator. Hungary debuts statue in honor of Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Hungary becomes the first country to honor Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto with a public statue. Today, a statue of Bitcoin creator was revealed in Budapest, Hungary, in front of a large and passionate crowd. The bronze statue, located in Grafisoft Park, was sculpted by Gregory Rika and Tamis Gile. When sculpting the statue, the pair wanted to capture the mantra of We Are All Satoshi, making Satoshi's face reflective so that when you look at the statue you remind yourself that you play just as an important role in bitcoin and satoshi as everyone else does this is also because the gender height weight and age of satoshi nakamoto are unknown making it impossible to sculpt a descriptive face of the creator of bitcoin meanwhile in hungary democracy has died there's been a takeover by the dictator there's a new kind of authoritarianism, and even the EU is checking it out, saying that Hungary's democracy crisis demands a European response. More trouble for Hungary, but at the same time, a very nice statue. Thomas Hunt, your thoughts on Hungary and their very nice statue. Well, obviously, it's an incredible statue, and I like that part about the reflective face. We are all Satoshi. Uh, what a nice message. I've been to Budapest. It's a beautiful city. I've uh, been there a couple of times, actually, pretty amazing. Uh, but yes, it's very unfortunate what's happened to Hungary's government. The authoritarian Orban has risen just as Trump is attempting and still attempting to rise in the United States on the idea of fear of foreigners. They have refugees in Hungary. People worry about the refugees taking too much and not giving back to society. This fear is amplified by a, a dictator who goes out there and makes speeches and fires them up. And sadly, I fear that's what's happened to Hungary. I hope they can change directions. It's a beautiful, wonderful country uh, with a, a horrifyingly sad history, especially if you go to the Terror Museum in Budapest and really understand uh, that this country right in between Nazi Germany and Soviet Europe was conquered by both, like one after the other. Uh, so they've had all this authoritarianism. It's sad to see them having it creeping again, but very nice statue. I remember when Mad Bitcoins used to report on small issues like this all the time. We'd be, you know, some little shop somewhere accepts Bitcoin. We'd be like, it's amazing they take Bitcoin. And now we have statues in the public square uh, even though it's Hungary, which is an awesome place, uh, unfortunate government, but uh, great job. Cool statue. Dan, Eve, your thoughts on Hungary's mad, just mir miraculous mirror clad statue. Well, it's uh, <clears throat> it's it's cool that they've obviously created a, a, a um, you know a kind of statue. But I always you know that I always remember that saying: um, "Don't worship Eric Idol um, or false idols. Don't worry, false idols." Um, what is interesting that it's it, you know it's the I, I was hoping for it to be. I like the fact that it's kind of you know it's uh, uh, a, a bland human, as it were. Uh, generic human but I was kind of I, I must admit there was a small part of me that was hoping it was Dorian Nakamoto and his like really confused shoulder shrug face like the you know that would have been really that would have been really cool right um but I mean uh, they did say about the the fact that it, it, it you know because we don't know uh, Nakamoto uh, Satoshi's gender but I mean uh, you know, technically uh he did declare it as uh as I as as male on a, on a forum so whether we take that as, you know, kind of uh, whether he, maybe he wasn't clever enough to, to, to identify himself. So we had to re-identify him as, uh, and I say him because it, it kind of did 
say on the profile he created it was a him but we won't we won't go down there um i did the uh going on the on the uh the the, the elizabeth warren's a shadowy faceless of group of super coders uh quote unquote um it is that's that's kind of i think that's really admirable because really she could have said like a, a shadowy faceless group of shit coders so at least they're super coders um bitcoiners so that's the that's the main thing i'm taking that as a positive uh, Hungary, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I think it kind of stands on whichever political side of the, the fence you're on as to whether it's a it's a crazy dictatorship or, or not. Uh, but um, and Vox, you know, they're, they're maybe perhaps a bit one sided. <laughs> but uh, my, but uh, we were on a snag do there <clears throat> and uh, once and and my, my one of my mates, he he got he, he got with a lady and, and decided in a club in the cool. I think it was the cool club of like 20 odd rooms. It was either that one. Or it was on the one on the roof of the, the the spa. Anyway, so decide to take her on a date. Where else? But like the war museum. And so building up all this time to make his move. And uh, and you know, they were going around. He said there was just really sad, there were really sad parts of the museum, obviously, because it's a it's a war museum. And there was one bit that was actually quite like it was, you know, it was uh the shoes, and it was really sad the way he described it, like this the shoes at the, the riverside, and they're all empty. That was the point he tried to make his move. What an idiot! Yeah, didn't go down well. Uh, don't don't make don't make a move because uh, apparently she was crying. I was like, you know, step one: don't don't make a move when when she's crying. <laughs> so so yeah, if you're ever going to the museum, don't don't try and make out of a, a, a date uh, with the empty shoes next to the river because it's both disrespectful and unsuccessful. Likely to be unsuccessful. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, so good good on Hungary for. Uh, for creating the Hungarian, the two people that but create a set statue, I think it's I think it's cool. It's you know, it's, and it's also it's another thing where Bitcoin is in your face, right? People will, will see it, they'll walk past the statue, they'll be intrigued by it, and they'll do a bit of research. And once you do a bit of research, you go down the rabbit hole, and uh, here we are. A very sad museum trip indeed. Uh, exit question: What do you think about the hoodie, Dan? The statue seems to be wearing a, a powerful hoodie. It was, uh, oh, I think it's, you know, it's like a, I suppose a hoodie is is kind of a symbol of, uh, it's seen sometimes negatively. I know that like, you know, in, in the stores around Southampton, like where I live, that, you know, there were there was a time where there was a time back in the day when, you know, people like had signs in the shop saying like no hoodie wearers. You literally couldn't, you know, you couldn't wear a hoodie in a shop, especially the sort of smaller shops where they didn't have security measures or they didn't have the, the cameras and stuff like that. But I think it, it is kind of symbolic, isn't it? Because with a hoodie, it's it's just easy to kind of, you know, to just put the zip up and be, you know, uh, what's the word? Pseudonymous, right? You end up being just, you just like, not zip, sorry, you know, do the cord up, like that, and you can just see through a little eye hole. And then suddenly you, you've, you've uh, you know, shaded your identity. So, yeah, I think it's it's kind of synonymous, isn't it, with, uh, with, with Bitcoin and being pseudonymous and anonymous and this. I, I agree, Dan. It's interesting how the hoodies become an international symbol of anonymity where, you know, yes, if you have the hoodie down, you're walking around like normal. But if it's nighttime, it's cold, it's bad neighborhood, you don't want anyone to bother you. You put that hoodie up and it's almost like you're a knight and you've put on your armor with a little face guard and the little thing. You can only see your eyes out. Uh, maybe it's a bit like the uh, Islamic burqa as well, uh, covering up the wearer almost completely to the eyes. Uh, but very clearly a symbol of anonymity, a symbol of uh, genericness. Anyone can be Satoshi. Anyone can be the guy in the hoodie. Anyone can be in the hijab or another similar covering where so much of your identity is covered by the outfit that you wear. So I think it was a good choice. Uh, it kind of felt like an American choice to me, like the hoodie. But I guess it's become such an international symbol uh, that it works in Hungary, too. Moving on, check out the World Crypto Network YouTube at WCN Clips. We're up to 70 subscribers, thanks to your help. Almost more, 70, almost more. You could just subscribe right now. Check out all the clips from this show and other WCN shows on WCN Clips on YouTube. Issue three, Bitcoin slides on environmental concerns but backers hope for a 100K high. The price of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies was down on Friday 
After a volatile week amidst rising concerns over Bitcoin's environmental impact, Bitcoin was down 0.4%, struggling to cross the $50,000 mark. However, many supporters on Twitter are hopeful that it will hit $100,000 by the end of the year. Dan Eve, the price of Bitcoin, will it hit $100,000 by the end of the year? Oh, I, I'm, I'm ever the optimist and I, I kind of hope so. We're in that range, right? Well, it's like 47K at the moment. Um, the, I think the, the sad thing for Ethereum is like, it kind of looks like it could be a double top. I'm not really a, I'm not really a trader, but uh, I, I, whenever I see a double top, I'm always like, ooh, that, that could be bad. But at the end of the day, if Bitcoin pumps to 100K, then, then you know, Ethereum and, and co, everyone kind of, you know, rides in the coattails of, of Bitcoin uh, and, uh, and jumps on that, that success train, right? Um, uh, whether, whether it's down to the environmentalism, though, I mean, it seems like this could be one of those, those things where they, they just like try and um, they see something that happens and then just try and attribute it to or as a consequence of something else, right? There was, there was nothing that I saw in particular, no big like article uh, that said, that said, oh, you know, that, that was, you know, shared around and got loads of popularity and said, oh, Bitcoin's really bad because the environment, you know, Bitcoin is the devil and all of that. Um, so it just kind of seems like they're just kind of do the post event Nostradamus like, oh, yeah, I know it's because of because of that. And it's easy to give a bit of backing uh, and find, you know, a general current theme and just put it and, and just put it on that. So whether it is down to the environmental concerns, um, I'm not really sure, but I am still hopeful that uh, we do ride ride the wave of destiny to 100 K plus. I don't think there's anything to be concerned about. Bitcoin just did another one of those little wiggles on the chart that it keeps doing. If you look behind you, you don't even see it anymore. So, no, I agree with Dan. It's nothing to do with the environmental news. Uh, the media just spins a wheel and they're like, oh, this is the biggest story this week. Bitcoin must have went down because of this. When really it's just buyers and sellers. We had that large seller a couple of weeks ago who was like, I'm done. And he sold and that scared a lot of other people and they ran away and then everyone else came in bought that up, probably driving the price back up. I'm not stock to flow model. I can tell you that there's less Bitcoins all the time. They seem pretty rare. They seem pretty valuable. I would think about it. So we'll see how it goes. Exit question, Dan, the price of Bitcoin this time next week, higher or lower? I will go, I'm going to go lower because I'm usually wrong and I've been going high pretty much all the time and it seems to go lower. So if I say lower, then everyone can enjoy it when it goes higher. I'm going to stick with higher. I usually say higher. Uh, that's where I am on Bitcoin for a long time back, going to like 300 or $1,000 or whatever. I uh, didn't think it was a big deal. thought it was a valuable thing, something worth holding. Uh, we just have to wait and see. And as for Dan's comments on Ethereum and the other coins, I agree. If Bitcoin goes to 100K, who knows where the other coins will go, especially with stories like issue four. AMC will let customers pay in Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin by the end of the year. Is this it, Dan? Bitcoin is hitting the retails. And everyone will soon be paying in Bitcoin, even in the United States. Or is this another one of those stories where we all get excited about it, but nothing really happens? Well, it's, you know, I think it's any, anywhere that accepts Bitcoin is a good thing. Like, right. It, it, when, you know, when I first started reading about Bitcoin and learning, you know, the, 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 the push was for people to accept it in places, right. It was always more about, you know, that's kind of become a shit coin thing, hasn't it? It's like, you know, everyone's like, oh, this, this place now accepts our shit coin. But back in the day, it was, it was more about Bitcoin being accepted in, in places. That was like the key, the key thing. Um, but, so I think it's good, right? I think it's good that, that Bitcoin, the more Bitcoin is accepted, the more places it's seen. It's kind of like American Express, right? When I, when I was growing up, American Express wasn't really, uh, wasn't really accepted many places. Now it's accepted a lot more places. 
And so the more people see it, the more familiar they are with it. And I, you know, lo and behold, you know, loads of people end up getting Amexes. And that's going to be the same for Bitcoin, I think. Obviously, you know, there's Ethereum, uh, Litecoin, and uh, and Bitcoin Cash. Um, why why Bitcoin Cash? I'm I'm not too sure. Obviously, someone's. I think you know, it's pronounced bit. Begging. It's a bit, <laughs> right? Yeah. B Cash, isn't it? B Cash, B Cash. B Trash. That's what all the hip cat. That's got, That's what all the hip cats call it, right? Um, but yeah, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, business is going to business, right? Um, the, I think what's bigger news than AMC adding Ethereum, Litecoin and Bcash is, uh, 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 oh God, God, right now I've had a mind blank here, but I think it's Namecheap that said that they are going to use or they're using big BTC pay server. So that's pretty cool. Like Namecheap, you know, big, big company or name Namecheap or name bright, something with a name in it not named coin, obviously. Um, but uh, they're accepting, B they're using BTC pay server. And I think, uh, and I think Nicholas Dorier also offered to even give them a, 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 a BTC pay server um, name cheap makeover, you know, in their, in their own branding for free. So I think that's a pretty cool bit of news. Um, but at the end of the day, adding shit coins, uh, you know, it's it, the end, if people want to pay in them, then then why not, right? If it opens it up, it, they know full well that lots of people have made money from from you know from altcoins. So why not accept like accept the altcoin and and get more customers? I think it just makes business sense whether you agree with with shit coins or not. You want to maximize profit, so. Well, first, I think we want to talk about AMC and how it's a meme stock, and then we'll get to the shit coins. Uh, the meme stocks made lots of money last year for no good reason. GameStop, AMC, other brands that people were psychologically attached to. They were like, when this pandemic ends, I want to go back to GameStop. I want to go back to AMC. And therefore, we will together defy the stock market, defy the analysts who are all saying, less people going to movies, less people renting and buying video games as they just download them on their consoles directly. Uh, these are bad buys. They went against that. They drove the price up and perhaps won a lot of money if they exited at the right point. On the other side of that, the companies, the real companies that actually underlie these stocks now have a lot of money. And like Conan O'Brien wrote in the monorail episode of The Simpsons, a town with money's like a mule with a spinning wheel. He don't know how he got it, and he don't know what it's for. So they now have to spend that money. And it looks like Dan said they're, they're upgrading their cash registers to take Bitcoin. They're probably partnered with BitPay or some kind of service. And for that service to turn on Litecoin or Btrash or Light or Ethereum or whatever is another button push. So hooray to AMC for pushing the extra buttons on the remote control uh, that will get you other currencies as an option. I don't think that really matters. What I think matters is what they do with this meme stock money and with this meme stock power. A lot of people have said GameStop itself, a dying business similar to Blockbuster Video, should immediately put Bitcoin ATMs in all of its locations. They should have someone at the counter explain to you what Bitcoin is, help you buy it, all that kind of stuff. It's way more important than video games, and it could transform their same store. Same thing for AMC. Bitcoin ATMs in all the lobbies, hire an extra person, have them explain what Bitcoin is, get people using this thing, because we all want total Bitcoin adoption. But the problem is, like Dan's saying, it's a chicken and an egg. Like The, the business wants it, but the consumer doesn't have it. The consumer has it, but the business doesn't want it. And the suppliers for businesses that have supplies, they don't want it at all. So what we need is we need everyone to be interested at the same time. The suppliers are interested, the business is interested, the customer is interested, and they all accept it at the same time. And everyone's like, but that's impossible. How will we do that? It's just gonna light a fire, just little itty bitty fires all over the place, little ideas where people get their Bitcoin ATM and they get their money and they get the Lightning Network and they're like, yeah, I could do this. I could pay in this. I could accept it for guitar lessons. I could accept it at my shop. I could pay for it at someone else's shop rather than that one of those Bitcoin ideas we have to watch out for is that I'm never going to buy anything idea. 
Like, oh, I'm never going to buy anything. Well, we're all going to buy things. Why don't we use Bitcoin or Lightning Network to buy things instead of using the old system? Because you have to buy something anyway. You can rebuy your Bitcoin. <laughs> you can transfer your money around if you still have fiat. Oh, my. So, no, I don't think it's a big deal, but it is a big deal that AMC is going this way with their meme stock money. We got to hope that GameStop and some of the others go this way as well. Dan, Eve, have you seen a movie in the theaters this year? Do you think you'll see one next year? Are movie theaters over? I, I, I haven't, no. But what I did see uh, was when we were looking for like a, um, like a family sort of trip. Um, camping sites that have done, uh, um, yeah, what are they call drive-ins, right? A drive-in, a drive-in movie theater. What are they call is it a drive-in? Yeah. So I um, think that, that might come back in popularity, right? It's kind of a, a cool thing. Giant screens and all the cars parked up. That's one thing. But I, I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks that um, that people, uh, you know, I, or what or did think that there's a pe- you know, people would flock back. The pub will always be busy, I thought to myself, right? I thought when we get back out, out of lockdowns, the pub's just going to be rammed all the time because people are going to be like, oh, my word, I'm so happy. I'm, I'm out of, you know, this, this, this box that I'm living in. But actually, I drive past, you know, multiple pubs quite a lot and they, they don't seem very busy. And I think, you know, maybe a lot of the, the country is still scared, right? They're still living in that that kind of, uh, you know, their current dystopian fear of like an evil, you know, virus that's 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 completely, you know, going to going to wipe us all out. So they're afraid to go out and they're afraid to mingle and mix. Um um, yeah, so I did expect kind of everywhere to be a lot more busy. Well, in and general. Uh, that's that's why it was so interesting over here. A lot of people wanted to reopen quickly, and they were like, "It doesn't matter what's going on. We have to save the businesses, right? We have to rush to reopen." And the reality is, many of the states tried it. They did reopen. People didn't go back. Like you can reopen all the movie theaters you want. If people think they're not safe, they're not going to go there. No one is life or death go to a movie theater, life or death, go to a restaurant. If that's the decision, the decision is to stay home. So that really shows, again, why we need to eliminate the virus and then reopen, right? We need to do a bunch of very difficult things. Then everything goes back to normal, as has happened with every other pandemic ever. Go back to the 1914 uh, flu uh, pandemic, the Spanish flu. Uh, same thing. People wore masks. They social distances. They got a vaccine. They took care of it. The virus died off. Everything went back to normal. There was no lasting tyranny. So we'll have to see how it goes. Um, as for myself, no, I have not been to a movie in uh, it seems like a couple of years now, uh, but I hardly miss it. Right. You can get a pretty good sized TV for not that much money. You can get a projector. You can put that on your wall. You can get various sizes of speakers for your home now. Uh, surround sound is pretty standard. You can get those sound bars. There seems like there's a lot of options to watch movies at home in the safety of your home. You can pause it. You can have your own beverage, whatever you want. Uh, it's very troubling for movie theaters. I don't think that the ability to spend Bitcoin and Litecoin is going to have me going back to the movie theaters. Uh, maybe Avatar 2, Matrix, Matrix 4, they say they're putting on both systems already. So uh, that's already just an HBO Max account away from watching at home. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe Avatar 2 in the IMAX 3D uh, might be the next movie have I you, see. Have you been to any Vegas shows though, right? Not really. I, mean, I think no. we might have went to one where it was like all masked. Like a, I don't know. I mean, I think I wanted to, but no, it's still not there. It, they've started to reopen some. So we went to like a, a baseball game that was outdoors and a soccer game that was outdoors. Uh, But even now they've started to say that the Delta virus is very efficient at spreading, that it's just a completely different ball game from the, I don't know, alpha virus or whatever we're calling the original strain. Uh, But yes, it just spread so well. No, I've just been laying low, trying not to go to things. And it's difficult because you don't want to fall into that trap of like, I'm never going to go to things again. Things are unsafe. But at the same time, it's a pandemic. It's a once in a hundred year event. Like it's unfortunate that we're going through it, right? But we're in it. We're in the middle of it. We're not at the end of it. Uh, so I'm I'm content to wait it out. And it's unfortunate. I'd like to be on a lot of things, going to some 
trips the other side of the country uh the curio cards auction in new york city uh, would be quite a nice thing to go to it's unfortunate to miss that and uh miss my friends in europe but now we gotta lay low for now see how it goes and the same thing for amc uh with the, with the exception of the meme stock thing i don't think the stock for going to movie theaters is that great either it did rise, didn't it, from two dollars to forty-eight dollars. I think peaked at like seventy-eight. So it's uh, it's on the it's on the way back down, maybe. It's the power the power of marketing, incredible work by the meme stock and the Reddit stock crew. Moving on to issue five, a single Bitcoin transaction creates as much waste as throwing out two iPhones. Economists find. Uh, there it is. The energy FUD is back again, saying that it takes the weight of two iPhone minis. Oh, that seems unfair. Why not just one iPhone? How, why two minis? And they say because Bitcoin miners cycle through a growing amount of short-lived hardware. So now it's the hardware from Bitcoin mining that's the problem. Uh, we talk about this all the time on this show because we think it's an important issue that the media is going to keep bringing up. Dan, is this the reason the price is down to iPhone minis? Uh, so for each transaction, so that means I'm just sitting on like a pile of iPhones over here. Like you, can, you can't see, uh, but behind me, nothing but iPhone minis all the way down. Uh, it just it's just another kind of fork of uh, of the general environmental uh, concern isn't it so now they they they've obviously the the, the electricity c consumption is is the main one and now they're like oh what else can we moan about um and now they're picking uh, now they're picking the e-waste right now obviously e-waste is is pretty is pretty bad you know we we use a lot of rare earth metals and we churn through stuff but um why not then say, well, Apple, do you really need to bring out a new type of MacBook every year? In fact, do you need to bring out three types of MacBook every year? Do you need to bring out four types of iPhone? You know, the, the, you know, the, the, the 13, what is it? The 13, the 13 mini, the 13 pro and the 13 pro max. Uh, and I actually go through it at, to very much environment, environmentalist display, probably about three iPhones a year, just through incompetence and dropping them. Um, so they must they probably really, really hate me as well as the Bitcoin transactions. But waste is like, again, it's 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 all down to what you think is waste. Right. And uh, and if ultimately anything where you're not using the absolute necessity, necessity, you know, the, the bare minimum necessity is waste you could say that humans can survive on uh you know can actually survive on on a thousand calories a day so anything above that is waste and therefore we're killing the planet you can say that you know anything like uh, I, I saw oh, an amazing one i saw was uh and there was a like a whole article on this uh because people have a lot of moan about and during a pandemic and lockdowns, they've got a lot of time to moan about stuff and research how to moan. Um, but for example, the, oh, where was it? Okay, opening the fridge to, keeping the, browsing in the fridge, that was it, fridge browsing. Did you know that when you're fridge browsing for more than, you know, that that's that's a waste. Like if you have a, if you have a, a moped instead of a car and, and you don't, you don't like cart stuff about with you a lot that you need a car for, that's a waste. Like everything's a waste. If you live in a house where there's more than one room, you could say that's a waste. Why do you need more than one room? You could live quite capably in, in less than a room. So I think, you know, you, you can, you can, you can say that anything is, is a waste really. If you, if you look at it and break it down and, and anything that you have or consume it is a waste. Um, if you know, I, I don't know. I just, it just seems like it's moaning for moaning's sake. And we're definitely in a moany society right now. You know, people, it's very much a victim based, you know, like mentality that we have, you know, rather than like when I was growing up, it's about being a hero and doing something good and blah, blah, blah. And now it's about like being a victim and, 
and clicking on a on a on a uh, on a you know what's it called on a petition online and that makes what that makes you a hero now they're like oh i signed 10 petitions a day i'm a hero because i signed petitions on the line you know that's a waste right because when you're browsing petitions that you don't agree with you're wasting time you're wasting energy and so yeah i don't know uh, you could you could, we live in a, in a in a disposable society and it's really bad um but whether you can, you know, moan about hard computer hardware that's used for a reason, it's it's got a purpose. It's securing a network. It's not even leisure. You know, everyone everyone needs money. Like every society needs money to function. What you don't technically need to function, let's be honest, is is like say, for example, and I'm not picking on the theatre, but something like theatre, right? Where you've got, uh, you for argument's sake, you've got a massive place with loads of spare room that's only used for certain periods during during the day, right? That's a waste, right? And not everyone likes the theatre. So not everyone likes Bitcoin. So we can moan about that. We can moan about theatre. You, know, you can find anything to moan about. Rant over, sorry. But yeah, I think it's just moaning for moaning's sake. And we should all go back to like mud huts and living underground and not consuming anything, if that's the case. Well, I agree with Dan here. It very much depends on what your priorities are. Uh, back when the internet was just starting up, people were like, why are they wasting all their time building this internet? Look at all these computers and all the electricity and people are looking at screens all the time and they're getting dumber and the radio and rock music and all these things are gonna destroy society. So it's another one of those. It's fun to see the way it shifted from too much electricity usage and they're trying to scare people. They're like, Bitcoin uses as much electricity as this country, as that country, as this country combined with that country. But it's not working. No one knows anything about these countries. Nobody's ever been to them. So now they're trying iPhones. But even then, they can't be genuine. They can't be just saying, it's as good as one iPhone. They have to say, no, it's as bad as two iPhone minis. I've never even seen an iPhone mini. They had terrible sales figures. I can't believe they brought the product back. And I can't believe that the best example these scientists have is two iPhone minis. Why not just say one iPhone? Because and also, it's scarier if you say two iPhone minis. Go ahead, Dan. And and also just that that you know to 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 do um, such lazy analysis really, and to just say two iPhones, right? What about the components in them? How about how they were sourced? what materials they came from, what the impact of those materials was. It's a really lazy analysis. Um, so like a bit like shameful, more shameful journalism that just goes, uh, that picks something based on weight, right? Because not all weighted things are equal. Like, you know, uh, I was going to say to, a ton of feathers and a ton of bricks, but they are obviously completely different, right? One had loads of chickens and one's loads of quarry i don't know but the fact is but they're two they're two different things like there could be way more um corrosive or bad materials or whatever in the iphones you've got no idea they could have been they could the the, the process and the manufacturing process of, of refining those materials could be a thousand times worse than the same the equivalent weight in mining so lazy lazy journalism and if you've got so much bloody time on your hands during this lockdown pandemic -y type thing then do a bit more research and give us a breakdown of the 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 of materials please and then i will heed your advice the other problem there is that the people mining the bitcoin network are doing their best to reduce costs if they could find a way to do it without these machines they would and in many cases they have moved to hydroelectric dams and other locations to get the power whereas apple and everyone that's making as much as i like these phones and everything they're the fast fashion of technology right I got the new phone last year, the new phone this year, it's no good, right? There's no little modules I can pull out. I can't even upgrade the battery anymore. This leads to a cycle where people are turning over their phones every year and maybe they're refurbished and maybe they go to someone else and hopefully that works. But the idea you're saying is true. We're filling up the landfills with these phones. That's probably why they used it as an example. Unfortunately, that example betrays itself because it goes back to this idea of, well, why do we have so many iPhone minis? And why do we have so many iPads and so many other competing iPads and other companies? And it's because you know, we can make anything we want. And people value Bitcoin mining, shock. I know they make lots of money, so there's a reason for them to value it. And it's gonna keep happening. 
So I don't think the media is going to make it with these articles, uh, but they do like to scare people and they might have depressed the price this week. Exit question, Dan, did this article depress the price of Bitcoin? Are people so scared that we're throwing away so many iPod, iPad minis, so many iPhone minis in exchange for these transactions? Yeah, well, sadly, it did have a wide impact. All I could see on Twitter was people that were crying and they literally gave away their Bitcoin. They said, oh, I can't believe that this, this, this even in fact, they didn't even give they threw away their private keys and they were like, oh, I, I can't even spend my Bitcoin and donate it because it's like throwing away two iPhones. It had such a huge impact. It's a real it's a real shame that uh, it had to end this way. Um, but yeah, thanks for your amazing article on your two iPhone minis. Also at the Apple event where they announced the new iPhone, the new iPhone mini, the new iPad, the new iPad mini, and all the other products, uh, they did not mention this at all. They did And the say same person many... who wrote that article was in that uh, watching the freaking keynote going, of course, oh, I'm going to type, I'm going to, I'm going to type this article on my o old iPhone. And then I've got it on my old magic keyboard because then there's a new version of the magic keyboard that's coming. They are all those people. They have these these frivolous, you know, requirements of, of upgrading and stuff. And yet they sit there in their ivory towers, their, their, their Apple white towers, moaning about stuff in a prep cafe, consuming their pumpkin spice latte and moaning about overconsumption. Sorry. Well, where do you think they had got the idea for having two iPhone minis, except exactly. they look down at their own table and they're like, wow, look at all these iPhones I have. <laughs> like no one Maybe else has guilt. two phones. Like I have one phone. I'm a normal person, you know, but these guys, they're like, man, two phones, every transaction, like even lightning network transactions. What about batch transactions where they put a bunch together? Are those still two iPhones? I, again, it's just bad article, bad media, bad. And, and again, we're going through these phases where like, just like when we were, you know, young Bitcoiners and we didn't know anything and we we're like, oh, this is going to happen. Oh, that's going to happen. Oh, no, this. The media is doing the same thing and they have the same complete lack of understanding. They're like a child. They're just like lashing out. They're like, oh, this new thing. He uses a lot of power. I don't know. It, it smashes up a lot of iPhone minis. Like there's just piles of them everywhere at these Bitcoin conventions. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm enjoying the visual of like walking over these piles of iPhone minis and they just crunch as you walk and they're just everywhere, uh, especially if you've sent too many transactions. Uh, so, but uh, let's move on. Let's not smash any more iPhone minis. Moving on to issue six, I think bonus issue. Department of Justice, United States, Ohio resident pleads guilty to laundering an operating darknet based Bitcoin mixer that laundered over $300 million. An Ohio man pled guilty today to money laundering conspiracy arising from his operation of Helix, a darknet based cryptocurrency laundering device. Uh, Helix was used and associated with Grams a darknet search engine also run by Harmon. It seems like the Bitcoins were mixed and then used in darknet markets where dealers sold opiums and opioids and other illegal drugs, a growing scourge. Dan Eve, your thoughts on the incredible capture of this gentleman by the United States government and that he is now pleading guilty. Oh, it's another one of those gotchas, right? Didn't they? They didn't they get him because uh, they sent the they sent the admin a message again saying something like, "Hey, um, I want to like I want to buy some ecstasy." Uh, well, no, 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 that's it. Selling proceeds of ex of selling ecstasy, and then the admin like didn't answer back, but then they processed the payment. And so you know that was enough. Like they it, they just seem so. I'm sure I read one the other day where it was like. Um, 13 out of 14 people in a sting operation were FBI, like undercover FBI. And you're like, I don't know, no, no. wait a second. At what point is there a ratio that's that's like that's like for that the article should actually read 13 
like evil government like people coerced one single person like if i had 14 13 people trying to convince me to do something i'm probably going to do it like you know it, it, that, that's the way things work and when you set people up in these situations um yeah i don't know, obviously if they've 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 uh, you know i don't know the whole case but you know the, the person's pleaded guilty whether that's a, a plea basis or i don't know but that's sketchy enough as it is i hate the idea of like you know if you, you break a plea deal because of the the threat of of worse right there's i've been watching loads of those confession tapes type stuff and they're like basically you're going to go down for murder even though they didn't do it and they're like you'll go down for murder but if you just if you just confess right now we can get you 10 years or whatever and you'll be out but you have the chance of being in the electric chair you know like you're going to go oh shit you're going to you know you're you're going to you're going to think to yourself well i might have to just admit to it um but um yeah the, the, the danger is that they caught him uh, based on uh i think um the, the setup transactions right so the, of, uh, the in 2011 as well so it was way back way back in 2011 and the records the public well, i say public records but the records in certain companies go back that far uh, but obviously bitcoin records go back to 2009 so it's that pseudo is pseudonymity pseudo anonymity but uh but but um at the same time you know, it's a very transparent ledger. So you've got, if you are doing something dodgy, you've got to be very careful. Otherwise you may get caught. Um, so yeah, it's sad that, uh, you know, that, 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 that um, so, uh, more people are going down for, you know, having free market type stuff going down, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, ecstasy is, is illegal. And so technically it, it's illegal. Uh, and so is money laundering. But, you know, ecstasy is also lots of fun, apparently. Um, so, you know, there's that part. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, he doesn't get sentenced or they don't get sentenced to to too hardcore. He, so he, uh, he doesn't get sentenced too hardcore. Ecstasy is also thought to be by many as a potential cure for PTSD. But yes, going back to this, again, it, it reads like a press release from a different time. Now that marijuana has been legalized in so many of these United States, so many other countries have legalized it, CBD is everywhere. And the example of Portugal is available to anyone. They decriminalized everything. They assist their addicts. They try to help them get onto methadone and other things like that, help the meth people, all that kind of thing. And that's a better way to deal with this. It's a treatment issue. It's not a crime issue. So yes, this person was allegedly running an anonymous mixer service so that people then could get the drug that they wanted. And as it's been shown once again, over and over again with economic issues, if there's a demand, there will be a supply, whether it comes from this country, whether it comes from another country, another state, uh, under the, you know, under the garage, wherever it's going to be some kind of hidden room, whatever it is, people are going to make the things they want to make, and they're going to distribute them. So it does seem like a backwards press release from a backwards country, who's still debating this war on drugs, when we have the example of Portugal, decriminalize, offer treatment, offer uh, treatment options, try to get people off the stuff. Uh, but it doesn't do it any good to have this illegal, um, you know, mirror around it and everyone's like, oh, it's so cool, it's illegal. And then the same thing with the cannabis, when they allowed the drug dealers to have cannabis as an entry level drug, people could try cannabis, say it's not so bad, and then get on heroin or meth or something that's much, much worse, much more addictive. And we have to separate those up, make it a treatment issue. Uh, people should go to hospitals. So not impressed yeah, like with this one. worked out. Exactly. Right. Prohibition, prohibition didn't work. Temperance didn't work. All these other movements where the government or other people try to say what you can and can't do. And sure, there are things that are very bad and we need to try to keep them out of society, but we need to be more reasonable overall and not just follow things because it's a tradition. You know, it's a tradition in the United States to be racist towards uh, black people and Mexicans and to bust them for marijuana. Well, that's a bad tradition. Let's get rid of that. Let's turn that one back. What's crazy as well is if you think about the the amount of infrastructure and the costs of that infrastructure, the, like the ongoing maintenance costs, the operating costs of 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 trying to uh, to kill the drug trade. 
Like, imagine if you just took that money. I bet it would cost a fraction of it to uh, to legalize everything let alone not just take it costing a fraction of the you know of the amount into medical services to to help people but like you would make money off it so not only do you make stacks of money but then you also save stacks of money because instead of loads of police officers going out loads of all this massive infrastructure all these crazy these crazy ass plans and uh, oh that was it i read a hilarious article the other day uh and, and um uh, I've got take me two seconds, but anyway, to, to get it up, but it's just, it's just insane, right? In a situation where you could be making money, they're actually, they're actually burning money. Um, and the th- so the thing I read the other day was that, was that, um, the, I think it was the CIA, but it was like, or something like that. It was like the CIA. Oh, that's it. The CIA says that uh, it has found no link between itself and the crack trade. <laughs> the fact that they even have to investigate that, like someone had to go, right. There seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a case between the CIA and, uh, and, and crack, uh, you know, and they had to do an investigation, which they, they came to the conclusion uh, of whether you trust that conclusion or not. That uh, the, the 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 CIA isn't instrumental in the crack trade, but I reckon it probably is. You know, of that thirteen out of fourteen principle. What if what if you know what if half of the half of the people that decide on these cases, half the judges are, are from the CIA? Ooh, I don't know. Then they'll never get they'll never get done for anything. We live in crazy times. It's a crazy world. Take care of your crazy self. Oh, it's also a lot like the war in Afghanistan. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars a day. I forget the right figure, but we spent millions every day. We didn't help those people. We didn't help our people. Uh, the whole time, right after 9-11, uh, during the period of, cra- of chaos and everyone uh, waving the flags, I thought, once again, we should bomb them with hospitals. You know, we should, oh, we should thrill them with kindness. You know, we don't need... Uh, what was it? Shock and awe. We don't need that. We need kindness. We need so kindness and surprise. And five years, 10 years from now, they'd be like, you know, those Americans are pretty good jerks, but they set up that free hospital over there. You know, they got that free food shop down the corner. Like I eat there sometimes, not so bad. And that's how you win a war. If you look at Hamas, not an example anyone wants to use, but over here in reality land, they give out services to their people. They do provide hospitals. They do provide safer neighborhoods than there would be without them. Sure, it's like the mafia, which also provided services. But once again, America could offer people services instead of bombing them, use the same money, but we can't because of tradition and the military industrial complex. And that's always how we've done it. And even though the Soviets spent a disastrous 20 years in Afghanistan, the US was like, Me too. Me too. And loss of lives on both sides, a horrible disaster, uh, just awful for the Afghan civilians. And uh, oh, well, we're leaving. It's over. (laughs) Let's move on to the next issue. Issue seven. We're running out of time. Why Bitcoin will thrive during a recession. Four surprising reasons why cryptocurrency could be a great way to outlast an economic downturn. According to the article in The Motley Fool, Bitcoin was created in response to the U.S. financial crisis. It's inherently diversified because its value isn't tied to a particular country and its allies. Other cryptocurrencies may have more upside than Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is a safer investment. Uh, Well, he hasn't said anything I disagree with so far, which is a surprise for The Motley Fool. Dan, Eve, what do you think about this idea that Bitcoin will thrive? during a recession well it definitely was was born from one right you know that's the again chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks uh that was like you know certainly the worst recession uh the, the in, in 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 my lifetime or at least one i i actually the only one the main one i experienced i suppose but so yeah but uh the fact is that that um it it's i don't know the the, the fact is that that uh, the Motley Fool have turned changed their tune. Obviously, this is only kind of one of the articles, but certainly, like I've 
been reading the Motley Fool for years and they hated on Bitcoin initially. So now at least they're not, they haven't gone down the road of like the I've missed the boat ism and they're just, all they do is moan about it. Like they've actually, t- look, you know, tried to look at the real points, right? You know, they've recognized the fact that um, that the, the Fed prints infinite amounts of money and that, 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 that with Bitcoin, the total supply ca- is capped and the, you know, the emissions are, d- are decreasing uh, as, as, you know, as the years go on with the halvening. So um, I think that's a very strong, you know, one of the strongest characteristics of, of Bitcoin that we know so well now with all the, the printing of money, which arguably has helped Bitcoin quite a lot, right? The, you know, the, uh, there was a big spike in Bitcoin's price when, when the first stimmy checks were printed and, uh, and everyone got their stimmies, right? And everyone was raving about it, the fact that they got their like, you know, their you know, $1,200 stimmy or whatever it was. And then within a few months, it was worth double and blah, blah, blah. So um, I think that definitely the, the pandemic helped helped uh, you know help the spread of bitcoin the printing of money and it helped people kind of realize that it's not a good thing to just print money limitlessly like that so yeah i think it's a good a good thing that uh, the motley fool have changed their tune and they're looking at not just like not just the fact they haven't just turned around and and said you know in this article you know the pump factor right because a lot of their a lot of their some well, a lot of their some of their articles are a bit kind of you know they 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 get even with traditional stocks they get a bit excited and they're like oh you know they might as well just say oh it's going to pump soon but with this they're actually breaking it down they're saying it was built for recessions it's inherently diversified it's secure and globally transferable store of wealth the supplies capped and added supply is decreasing and it's built to last. So spot on Motley Fool, good article. Well, I agree with Dan here that Motley Fool is not always like Bitcoin. And while it is only one guy at Motley Fool writing this still, he seems to like Bitcoin and understand it. It's great to see these things said by someone other than me, someone other than the libertarian Bitcoiners from years ago. Uh, All these things have always been true about Bitcoin, but it's great that they're coming to see them now and that now, again, they have this ability to make up for their mistakes. They weren't with us in the beginning, but they could be with us now. So that's the thing with Bitcoin, whether it's El Salvador or the Motley Fool, we take our friends where we can get them. We don't get to choose them. Sometimes... They might not be the best friends and they might not have done the best things in the past, but we have to see how that goes. And again, anyone can use Bitcoin, even this guy at the Motley Fool. I think we're heading towards the end of the show. Everyone should check out worldcryptonetwork.com. We've got statistics about this channel. There are over 2,915 videos. That's three months eight days and 22 hours of straight content if you watched it back to back it's been seven years eight months and 24 days since our first video and if you check out right here we've been replaying some of the original first bitcoin group episodes these have never been played on the world crypto network before at that time the bitcoin group had its own separate channel eventually we moved the show over here around episode 33 I was uploading them to both channels, and I think around episode 60 or so, I stopped uploading them to the Bitcoin Group channel and only put them here. The Bitcoin Group has been supporting other shows here on the World Crypto Network, giving people a chance to get their opinions out on Bitcoin uh, for, it seems like, seven or eight years now. So it's been a long time. And check out worldcryptonetwork.com to learn more about that. Dan, are you ready with a prediction or a story of the week? Go ahead. I'm I'm never ready with a prediction or story of the week, um, but uh, um, I predict that 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 uh, the uh, uh, the Curio cards uh, auction in Christie's is going to go really well for Mad Bitcoins. Ah, oh, Dan is stealing my story of the week there too. I was going to say it's all about <laughs> Curio cards. Uh, In just a couple weeks, October 1st, we're going to be auctioned off by Christie's Auction House in New York City. Gary V was already on CNN, and he mentioned Curio Cards on CNN. So check out the clip on uh, Mad Bitcoin's Twitter. 
I did some remixes of that as well. I uh, cut up the Hugh Grant movie, Mickey Blue Eyes, got some cool auction scenes in there I'm going to be releasing this week and one that I released last week. Uh, but yeah, it's all about Curio cards. It's all about 2017 Ethereum-based NFTs uh, that people had forgotten about. And for a long time, I thought that NFTs weren't real and it was just rich people trading back and forth amongst themselves or insider deals. But eventually they got down to Curio cards and they're buying those too and they're very excited to see them. So there is some reality to this, whether it's a fad or a mega fad or whether it lasts forever or it's a mega fad that lasts forever. I don't know what it is, uh, but people love NFTs. They love Curio cards. Uh, super excited that they're going to be auctioned thanks to Christie's. Uh, they had the announcement this week. It was really neat uh, to see your friends like Finip and Crypto Graffiti and Crypto Pop, Marisol Vengas, uh, Daniel Friedman, Robex World, uh, all the artists, uh, Thoros of Mir, everybody from Curio Cards all listed in this very serious catalog. You know, like it says Berries, comma, Finip. You know, a digital artwork, you know, JPEG, and it has the address, like the cryptocurrency address for the piece. Uh, so it was really neat to see that converted into, you know, Christie's fancy auction speak. And I hope it goes well. I hope somebody buys it and it sells for lots of money and that they're happy uh, with their collection because they're very uh, hard to collect a full set. It's very hard to do. So uh, I think that's going to be about it for the show. Uh, Dan, anything that we missed? Anything else to say? Uh, I, 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 think, I think we've wrapped it up quite a lot. Well, quite well. We're still having technical if difficulties. We don't know what's going on. Originally, oh. we would stream this show from Zoom to restream mm -hmm. it. That would go out to everybody. Uh, then that didn't stream to YouTube. So then we connected it directly to YouTube. That didn't work last week, and that didn't work this week either. Uh, so we're recording onto Zoom. We're live on tape. You can still give us a thumbs up. That would still help us out. And give us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of the show, if you disagreed with us or if you agreed with us. And thanks to anybody in the chat that's watching the premiere. Uh, we can see those messages afterwards, too, thanks to YouTube. So uh, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Oh,